Is anyone out there who still doubts that America is a place where all things are possible? Who still wonders if the dream of our founders is alive in our time? Who still questions the power of our democracy? Tonight is your answer. For 12 years, you have been asking, who is John Galt? This is John Galt speaking. I am the man who loves his life. I am the man who has deprived you of victims and thus has destroyed your world. And if you wish to know why you are perishing, you who dread knowledge, I am the man who will now tell you. You've heard it said that this is an age of moral crisis and that a man's sins are destroying the world. But your chief virtue has been sacrifice. And you've demanded more sacrifice at every disaster. You've sacrificed justice to mercy and happiness to duty. So why should you be afraid of the world around you? Your world is only the product of your sacrifices. And while you were dragging the men who made your happiness possible to your sacrificial altar, I beat you to it. I reached them first and told them about the game you were playing and where it would take them. I explained the consequences of your brother love morality, which had been too innocently generous to understand. You won't find them now when you need them more than ever. We are on strike against your creed of unearned rewards and unrewarded duties. If you want to know how I made them quit, I told them exactly what I'm telling you tonight. I taught them the morality of reason, that it is right to pursue one's own happiness as one's principal goal in life. I don't consider the pleasure of others my goal in life, nor do I consider my pleasure the goal of anyone else's life. I am a trader. I earn what I get in trade for what I produce. I ask for nothing more or nothing less than what I earn. That is justice. I don't force anyone to trade with me. I only trade for mutual benefit. Force is a great evil that has no place in a rational world. One may never force another human to act against his or her judgment. If you deny a man's right to reason, you must also deny your right to your own judgment. Yet you have allowed your world to be run by means of force, by men who claim that fear and joy are equal incentives, but that fear and force are more practical. And there's your brother love morality. Why is it more moral to serve others but not yourself? If enjoyment is a value, why is it moral when experienced by others but not by you? Why is it moral to produce something of value and keep it for yourself when it is moral for others who haven't earned to accept it? If it is virtuous to give, isn't it then selfish to take? Your acceptance of the code of selflessness has made you fear the man who has a dollar less than you because it makes you feel that that dollar is rightfully his. You hate the man with the dollar more than you because the dollar he's keeping is rightfully yours. Your code has made it impossible to know when to give and when to grab. You know that you can't give away everything and starve yourself. You've forced yourselves to live in undeserved, irrational guilt. Is it even proper to help another man? No, if he demands it as his right or a duty that you owe him. Yes, if it is your own free choice based on your judgment of value of that person and his struggle. This country wasn't built by men who sought handouts. In its brilliant youth, this country showed the rest of the world what greatness was possible to a man and what happiness is possible on earth. Then it began apologizing for its greatness and began giving away its wealth, feeling guilty for having produced more than its neighbors. Twelve years ago, I saw what was wrong with the world and where the battle for life had to be fought. I saw that the enemy was an inverted morality and that my acceptance of that morality was its only power. I was the first of men who refused to give up the pursuit of his own happiness in order to serve others. To those of you who retain some remnant of dignity and the will to live your lives for yourselves, 
you have the chance to make the same choice. Examine your values and understand that you must choose one side or the other. Any compromise between good and evil only hurts the good and helps the evil. If you've understood what I've said, stop supporting your destroyers. Don't accept their philosophy. Your destroyers hold you by the means of your endurance, your generosity, your innocence, and your love. Don't exhaust yourself to help build the kind of world that you see around you now. In the name of the best within you, don't sacrifice the world to those who will take away your happiness for it. The world will change when you are ready to pronounce this oath. I swear by my life and my love of it that I will never live for the sake of another man nor ask another man to live for the sake of mine. I'm William K. for ReTeaParty.com. Good day.